Welcome to Vigorous Nutrition. I'm Coach Steve. Let's talk about combining protein sources so you can get a better amino acid profile with each meal. Because, you know, the traditional method of, uh, you know, bro dieting or dieting for bodybuilding or fitness is, uh, you know, one protein source per meal and then you have five or six meals with five or six different protein sources, you know. So you have uh, egg, egg whites for breakfast and then uh, maybe chicken for your second meal and then you train, yeah, so you have a whey protein shake afterwards, and then the, the, the third meal is chicken again. Maybe then you have a little bit of white fish because you feel full and you want something to easily digest. And then you have either salmon or beef before bed, you know, or the old school way is uh, by having cottage cheese. For those of you guys that are from Holland, it was the best thing ever. You, you buy a bucket of cottage cheese, you know, when you're on a budget, and it was really, really cheap. It gave you 50 grams of uh, casein protein. Um, which is, of course, not 100% bioavailable, but, you know, when you're younger, you only see that 50 grams of protein for half a kilo of cottage cheese. And uh, you add a little bit of honey and maybe even a little bit more whey protein to make it palatable. You have that before bed. It's the best uh, gainer you could ever have uh, when you're on a budget and you're younger. Um, I haven't seen it here in Thailand, and I know a lot of other countries don't have cottage cheese. But, man, it was the best thing ever when I started bodybuilding. Um, so that's where my protein combining idea come from once I started researching about cottage cheese and I realized that it was casein protein digesting a little bit slower and I was training in the evening at that time so you know you, you go to school or, or work and you you have your, uh, your workout later in the evening and then you have a casein uh, or the cottage cheese or have it, half a kilo of cottage cheese for 50 grams of protein and then I added a scoop of whey protein in there to um, have a little bit faster digesting protein on top so you have the, the free and a higher bioavailable whey protein inside the cottage cheese, which is reducing and slowing the digestion a little bit, preventing gluconeogenesis of the very high bioavailable protein that's in whey protein. And it completes the amino acid profile. So now you have a fast or reasonably fast digesting protein and a slow digesting protein sustaining you throughout the night. Now, I've cut out all dairy products <laughs> a long, long time ago. Because I get pimples, and, and again, you know, it's even though I'm 36, I still get a little bit of acne. Even got one here, 36, still got acne. <laughs> Genetic lottery, thank you, thanks. So, those the the, the whey proteins and the the yogurts, I you know, still have a little bit of yogurt. Different story. And the cottage cheese I took out a long, long time ago, so now I have beef or salmon and avocado before bed. And I like to combine several protein sources because you get a broader amino acid profile and they complement each other so you can combine for example um, beef and chicken right beef and chicken so now you get a little bit more creatine you get a little bit of arachidonic acid in uh, you know from both protein sources if you can afford free range or grass-fed beef you get a little bit more omega-3s for that and a little bit reduced uh, cholesterol you know compared to the uh, corn-fed or grain-fed beef that lives uh, you know in the, in the food industry so you complement all these protein sources, you complement them with each other. And the beef digests a little bit slower than the chicken, so now you get a more sustained release compared to eating chicken by itself or beef by itself, which digests a little bit slower, but you want the protein a little bit faster from the chicken. You make it as easy as possible by yourself because nobody likes dry chicken and nobody likes dry beef, so you put it in the grinder. Now you got a chicken and beef patty. Right? And you can either cook that in, in, into a hamburger or, uh, you know, mix it up and everything is loose and easy to, die, uh, you know, to, to, to eat. And then you put that on top of rice mixed with quinoa. Now you got four different food sources in one meal. Chicken, beef, rice, and quinoa. Mix it all together. It, it basically you turned into a porridge. But the good thing is, because it's all soft and moist, you don't need to chew that much. And when you're eating a ton of food... And you're on a decent amount of androgens, um, jaw hypertrophy will start to occur. Now, I don't get it so much because I'm, I'm not on that many androgens. And right now I'm fasting, so I'm basically not eating anything. And I prefer to eat fish and, um, eggs, which is, you know, a little bit easier to chew compared to, to dry chicken and dry beef. So again, this combination is just something you can try. I tried it with many of my clients. And they're super, super happy that they ground up everything and, uh, you know, make it easy to eat. So you just get your Tupperware and while you're working, just keep scooping that in with a fork or spoon, whatever you prefer. Keep scooping that in. You chew it as, uh, as much as you need. 
creating a little bit of saliva to help with the digestion process, but you don't have to chew that into infinity that you get a, you know, um, hyperplasia of the jaw muscles. Um, you get a nice Batman jaw. So, you know, there's a, there's a plus side to that as well. You can do the same with fish. So I prefer to combine my salmon with sea bass. I'm on a ketogenic diet. So I like a little bit of omega-3 and fat with each meal. But if I eat salmon with each meal, it's too much fat for my dietary requirement. So what I do is I combine salmon with sea bass. I cook that all at the same time. And then I spread that out over a few meals. And unfortunately, when you cook fish, you know, two, two different kinds of fish in the pan, it completely disintegrates. So that's why I never show pictures on Instagram because it doesn't really look palatable and, and appetizing. Um, you just mix it together, you know, you get, let's say, 150 grams of sea bass and 100 grams of salmon. Now you got a decent amount of omega-3s, but not too much fat for that meal, limiting your, uh, you know, uh, your your ketogenic restrictions or, or the restrictions that you have uh, during the off-season when your fat intake is a little bit higher. The, the salmon will slow the digestion of the sea bass because sea bass is white fish and it, you know, digests is real, reasonably easy, so you don't feel so hungry. And you get a little bit wider amino acid profile. Now, fish is reasonably close, same as chicken and turkey and, uh, you know, beef and uh, bison. You know, it's all reasonably close because they're, they all fall in the same family of animals. So if you want even more variety, so chicken and beef is, gives you a better variety in amino acid profile compared to salmon and sea bass or salmon and flounder or flounder and sea bass, you know, whatever combination you prefer. And you can very easily find these amino acid profiles by yourself. Do a little bit of research. You go to Google and you type in nutritiondata.self.com or type it into the, you know, the link field. And, and all the nutritional data is right there. You know, it's something you don't find on MyFitnessPal or some of the other applications is they only contain the macros, but they don't contain the micros. And the good thing about nutrition data is that, uh, dot self.com is that they have all the amino acid listed and, and a little schematic of the amino acid profile based on the essential amino acids. And then you can make a very nice combination, you know. Let's say it's a uh, devoid of certain amino acids and you find that in another protein source. Okay, you combine them and then you only have to worry about um, the taste and the palatability and, and how well they go together cooking wise. Because, you know, some things you just can't cook together at the same time because, you know, some things cook faster than other things and or you have to cook them separately and then put them in Tupperware and prepare them for the rest of the day. Again, go by the amino acid profile, but also make it easier for yourself. Because the last thing you want to do is spend four hours in the kitchen every day preparing meals uh, just for a little bit of benefit, um, which you can easily, you know, put everything into a rice cooker and just turn it on and let everything heat itself by steaming or uh, boiling that way. So combinations that I like, eggs and beef in the morning, during the day, beef and chicken or uh, turkey and beef, it's a little bit leaner, you know, and again, you know, which w whatever beef combination you prefer. You can also do turkey and uh, pork tenderloin. Some, some of you guys will probably lo like this because turkey is a little bit dry, but pork tenderloin keeps a little bit of the moisture. Now, you don't have to worry about pork unless you have um, religious restrictions, same as beef. Some guys will have religious restrictions that they can't eat beef or can't eat pork. So, I don't know. If that the case for you, but if, if that's the case for you, then obviously you shouldn't be making these combinations, but find an alternative that works for you based on the restrictions you have. So if you don't have those restrictions, turkey and pork tenderloin is a great combination yeah, for taste and the amino acid profile. And pork tenderloin doesn't have so much cholesterol, so it's not something you have to worry about. I know that pork tenderloin and Turkey breast is a little bit more expensive compared to chicken or decent uh, beef cut. So you eat that maybe twice a week, you know, and, and, and that's why you keep your food sources and protein intake reasonably varied. You can do the same with bison and deer, you know, wild game meat or, or um, maybe a little bit of fatter cut of beef combined it with deer just to make it um, less fat again and, and get a wider amino acid profile, you know. You'll have to figure out which combination works best for you and is very enjoyable. But I found that it really improves um, muscularity, muscle density, muscle hardness, recovery, because your muscles have just more amino acids to pull from. 
at any given time because now they're digesting a little bit more stable. They get a more wider variety of amino acids and the micronutrients which are contained within the animal meat sources. And you just respond better and you grow better and you recover better. And you look better, ultimately, especially if you have a decent amount of omega-3s, which help with skin and connective tissue and insulin sensitivity. Uh, lipid profile, I mean, the list is long. Um, it will be a very long video if we go into everything. So give that a try, guys. Combine a couple different protein sources, figure out which one have a nice complementary amino acid profile and complement each other, um, you know, uh, cooking-wise or... Uh, um, you know, enjoyment wise while eating it. Give that a try. I'm sure you'll look a ton better as a result of it. And I wish you all a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.